Greetings uh, from sunny Athens to everyone that's joining us and a huge welcome uh, to Samir Madani from tankertrackers.com who uh, is here to talk to us today about how he uses marine traffic to monitor the global oil trade. Samir, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. It's uh, from uh, sunny Stockholm here. Okay, so um, what can you tell us about uh, tankertrackers.com? It seems like it's grown a great deal over the last few years to become really one of the go-to sources for anyone that's interested in oil. That's right. We monitor all the top exporting uh, oil, oil exporting countries that make the headlines for all the wrong reasons. And there's many wrong reasons right now. And it's very interesting because you have a situation where the the largest oil producers are in a clash now for, for market share. And uh, they decided that they'll just flood the market. And now they're trying to scale back on this wrong decision because of the fact that the coronavirus has dampened or actually destroyed so much demand for oil. And so the actual demand has dropped by a third, uh, meaning from 100 million barrels a day to say 70 or 66 uh, million barrels a day and the actual consumption of oil is even worse than that so you look at the how much traffic you see or don't see on the streets and it's actually dropped even further so th the demand is actually based of, on consumption plus storage so you have a lot of oil that's moving from one storage facility in one country to another storage facility in another because of the fact that prices are so low there are buyers who are just buying it for the sake of storing it and then selling it further once oil prices rise even higher. Let's say once demand uh, increases over the next half year to even two years for all we know. So who really stands to benefit from that the most? Uh, well, it would be the traders obviously who are gonna be making uh, a pretty penny once they, once they uh, uh, once demand increases and they, they take their whatever it is they're paying now, maybe $10 or $20 a barrel, and they're going to sell it for 60 70 in the future, for all we know. Uh, but looking forward, probably going to hopefully land somewhere between 35 and 40 and kind of like stabilize the, the, the market and, and obviously try to make some kind of equilibrium between uh, buyer and, and, or sorry, between producers and consumers. Okay, and you're very popular in Twitter, on Twitter all of the time, but obviously, especially right now, you're very much in demand. And anyone that follows you will uh, be uh, re you know, really clued up on the fact that you love using marine traffic uh, to be able to monitor the global uh, tanker fleet. Can you just run us through sort of what's your favorite feature on the service and how do you use it in your everyday work? Absolutely. Uh, before I go to the desktop, I can say that I've been using marine traffic for, uh, let's see, professionally, I've been using it in my past career for, the, for, for about two years. And then after that, I've been using it uh, when, I, when I decided to develop a career out of this hobby. And uh, it started first as a hobby in 2016. And then as of 2018, made it a full-time uh, job. So I've been using marine traffic for almost six years, in fact. And it was as of four years ago that I got in touch with the team at Marine Traffic and, and, uh, and uh, wanted to uh, get some more features aboard and uh, make more, more use of this uh, service. It's a wonderful service. So what I've done is, um, I'll show you here, I'll share my screen. There we go. I hope you see it now. Yeah, sure do. So uh, the number one thing I really love uh, on this, uh, map is the ability to clear out the noise. So what I'll do is I'll go to the vessel filters here on the top left and I go to ship type and since I'm concerned with uh, crude oil for instance then I'll disable the ship types all of them and I'll enable under tankers the crude oil tanker. Now obviously not all uh, vessels that are called crude oil tanker are carrying crude oil and not all um, uh, crude oil is only shipped aboard crude oil tanker. But uh, let's, let's, for the sake of uh, this demonstration, let's go with that uh, assumption. So uh, here are all the crude oil tankers of all sizes and all conditions, meaning either they're full, they're half full or empty. So what I'll do is I'll filter it down even further and I'll go to, for instance, the uh, current status and I will remove everything that is empty 
meaning in ballast. And ballast means that there's only seawater sea aboard the vessel to keep it in balance. So I'll remove that, and I'll remove the unknowns, and I'll have partially laden and laden, meaning that they're, they're, they're partially full and, and full. So now we have filtered down to this level. And the next level I want to, to, to filter down is, I only want to see the super tankers. And super tankers carry 2 million barrels of crude oil aboard. Now I know from my own studies that uh, a, a VLCC super tanker is around 330 meters of length. So what I'll do is for good measure, I will take the overall length here under other particulars and punch in, let's say 320 meters to a 500 meter range. That will include uh, vessels that don't even exist any longer, but nonetheless, we have that here and it's filtered it down even further. Now I wanna see, let's say all the vessels that are going from, for instance, Saudi Arabia to China. So I go to Voyage, I click here, point A is country, Saudi Arabia, and then B, country, China. And there we have it. So these are all the full and partially full VLCC super tankers that have left Saudi Arabia and are still en route to China. And we can see here, if we click on them, great lady, she is full. She's 20 meters deep in the water, meaning that she's carrying around 2 million barrels. And she's going to Huizhou, which is near Hong Kong, from Rastanura. And we click on pass track here. And we can see the entire route. And we can see that she departed on the 5th of May, the uh, 5th of uh, April. And she is uh, due to arrive in Huizhou on the 23rd of April. So today is the 22nd. And uh, she's only a day or not even a day away, she's just a few hours away. So um, these are the features that I, I, I like to use a lot, uh, the filters. Um, I think there's a lot of value in them uh, because they immediately help me cut down to the chase. I'm able to uh, see exactly what I wanna see. If a journalist calls me and says, hey, can you tell us how many vessels are going from here to there? And then I can just quickly uh, run it through the vessel filter. And so this is what I love to do. I also love the fact that there's a mobile app for this, uh, for, for marine traffic, because uh, with that, I can do these uh, searches as well on my phone. And I can also receive notifications of anything uh, out, out at sea. For instance, if a vessel which leaves a country and hasn't reported its uh, depth, because the depth is what we use to calculate how much oil is aboard the vessel. Now, what I do is I, I tag each vessel with a uh, notification, so I go here, let's say this one here, vessel details, it opens up the vessel, and I can create a notification, and in there I specify, for instance, I want uh, that the des if the destination changes, I click on that, if the draft level changes, I click on that, uh, if the vessel, for instance, changes its e ETA, then I'll enable all three, and I'll go down and I'll push continue. And I wanna receive a notification. Uh, I store everything in my emails and marine traffic is nice enough to store everything in archive as well. But I also want the mobile push notification so it, it uh, notifies me through the app. So when I'm in the supermarket, sometimes I get a notification, it's funny. Uh, but it allows me to immediately uh, know what's happening. I don't miss any event and I can quickly address uh, in a breaking news story, or I can uh, you know, respond to a journalist in time. So I click on continue and then save. And then that's done. So for that vessel, I will receive a notification. Now, the other thing uh, I really love about marine traffic is the fact that there, there's fleet management. So I can create all kinds of fleets. And that means I can group uh, multiple vessels together and I can apply these um, here, for instance, here's China all the vessels that are floating in China waiting to deliver oil. So what I do is I group them together and I can receive notifications on the entire fleet. So if a vessel within the fleet does something, I'll receive notifications for that particular vessel. So the other thing I really love is the uh, Explore tool. Uh, here you click on, in the map, you have the Explore up top and you go to Vessels. And so for instance, 
let's uh, push Reese. No, I don't need to do that. But yeah, okay. Let's push reset here. And what I like about it is that here you have at the top bottom it says uh, you got 1.129637 records. So that's how many vessels there are uh, that are being picked up by uh, marine traffic, either live and also stuff that's dormant. Uh, but so let's filter it down. Let's see uh, what we can do with this data. We have so much of it here. Uh, so I'll go and let's pick out, for instance, all of the vessels that belong to uh, Mongolia. Hey, let's try that. So country, a landlocked country. Let's see if they got anything. Uh, owner country, Mongolia. Mongolia. Mongolia there. They got one vessel. <laughs> Not the best example. So let's let's go with another country. Let's go with, uh, for instance, um, Kuwait, where I was born. All right. So there's 99 records. Oh, I should exclude Mongolia. There we go, like that. And now there's 90 vessels in marine traffic's uh, system and let's take only the tankers so we go to uh, add another filter and we go by type and let's go by detailed type and let's focus on the crude oil tankers so there we go all right so there's eight of them according to this so what's really cool about it is that we have an image of the vessel and that's good because in my line of work I actually uh, require this for uh, verifying what I'm actually looking at when I open up, uh, for instance, a, a satellite uh, a database such as uh, Planet Labs. So I'll open up here uh, Planet, for instance. And uh, what we'll do is let's take one vessel here, um, Jabria, Al Jabria 2. And let's run a pass track on her. All right, so she came from Kuwait. Uh, there it is, April 15th, she departed. And let's see how long she was there. Sometimes you have to go back like this. And it shows us, there we go. So she arrived on the 13th, she did her loading on the 14th, and she departed on the 15th. All right, so, and there's Kuwait. Um, here we go. That's what it looks like. And we can look at some of the infrastructure underneath the water, for instance. Here you have on the nautical maps, which I chose here from the, on the top right, you have these yellow little markings with the little black, uh, little icons, uh, those are the SBM delivery points or, or uh, loading points rather. And the way it works is that you have pipelines under the water because this water here is relatively shallow and it uh, connects to the uh, oil source, which could be the storage tanks. Uh, and, and it goes out into the water by pipeline. And then the, the vessels, they hook up with the hose to these SBMs or single buoy moorings. And there's so many of them here, as you can see. And they load up, uh, it's actually one, two, three, four, three, five here. So uh, they load up their oil and then they depart. Now let's go to this one here. And so it's located there. So we'll go to Kuwait on planet. And I will select here that, oops there okay and then I'll go to Kuwait oh. there we go a little bit closer so the date range we're looking at is the 14th uh, so I will select here uh, planets 
14 through 15. So let's take 13 through 16 just for good measure. And let's go with uh, all the satellites. Just to improve our chances here. Let's go to 14th or 15th rather, morning. Uh, we're not going to see anything here now. Let's see. Is that her? Uh, by the looks of it, it does seem to be there. There, yes. So that's her there. There's the vessel. She's got a green deck. And in the photo here, you can see um, she's got a green deck as well. And she is how long? She is a, a VLCC, so she should be around 333. There we go, 333 meters by 60 meters. So if I go here and I click on ruler, I measure, and I can see that she's 333, a little bit fuzzy here, and she's also 60. There we go. So uh, what we see here, for instance, is that um, based on the shadow of this vessel, she's a little bit thicker uh, on, on, on day two. So she's, she's loaded up quite a lot of oil. And you can see here that she's spitting out seawater uh, in order to displace it with, uh, with crude oil. Uh, you can't have too much seawater with, with the crude oil uh, uh, because it, it's unnecessary. So the v vessel which uses the seawater to stabilize itself when it's empty of oil, uh, it will contain all that seawater and then once, they, once they've loaded up with the oil then they just uh, spit out uh, this uh, seawater. All right, so um, that's how we do that. And yeah, there's tons to, to learn from uh, marine traffic's uh, system. Uh, I'm discovering new features all the time, but I'm also um, contributing a lot of ideas to the team as well. And they've done a wonderful job over the years in facilitating us with a lot of requests, which uh, helps improve our, our daily work. And so. Thank you so much. Uh... For that explanation, so it's really fascinating stuff, and uh, it's crazy that even I, who work at marine traffic and have been there for four years, still learns a lot of new, new and cool stuff. Uh, uh, you know, when when combined our stuff with uh, other with other companies, and and how yeah. you do that. I'm still learning a lot even from you, uh, which is great. I was I'm very fascinated when you were doing all of this last year with the Adrian Daria one, and uh, you know, world media uh, had their attention on that vessel, which happened to be the most searched vessel of last year, but also, you know, on you, uh, who was who was tracking it and was like, you know, the go-to expert on tracking it. Was that a interesting time for you too? Oh, very, because we, um, we learned a lot, but we were also uh, informing, our job was really to inform what was actually going on. There was a lot of political back and forth uh, between Iran and, and the United States on this, uh, and with UK in the middle. And we were actually just focusing on the facts and figures and, and image, imagery and, and, and data to show the people what was actually happening. So while all the attention was on this one vessel, we were actually showing the entire stream of, of vessels coming through the Suez Canal because the Adrian Daria One had shipped all the way around Africa from Iran up through uh, the, the Mediterranean. And what we were saying is that this is not the normal delivery route. Instead, they always ship around the Arabian Peninsula through the Suez Canal, and they send off smaller vessels, which can handle a million barrels at a time. So while she was still in, in let's say, custody in Gibraltar, uh, up until the point that she arrived in Syria, we saw something like, I think, seven uh, of these vessels. So seven million barrels had, had shipped through the Suez Canal with their Iranian flag on. So uh, Suez uh, has no right to stop any flags unless uh, Egypt has a, a, a war going on with a, a specific country. And that's in the Convention of Constantinople since 1880 something. And um, it's been a very interesting learning experience. We also applied the different uh, techniques to understand what the vessel, uh, if she was empty or full. So that's why I looked at shadows much closer learned uh, how to read those, uh, interpret how, much barrel, how many barrels are bored down to nearest 100,000 barrels. 
And uh, so while the U.S. government, for instance, was saying that the, the vessel has delivered the oil, we were actually seeing uh, both from ground footage, because there was some kid on Snapchat who actually posted a video. <laughs> from, yeah, from the that. We were just, uh, just inadvertently caught it, and I, I, I managed to catch it on Snapchat. But also from satellite imagery, we could see that the vessel was heavily laden in the water, so it was fully packed with the 2.1 million barrels of light crude oil from Iran. It's, it's crazy, like the kind of work that you do, you know, incorporating obviously all the great AIS tracking from marine traffic, but then Planet Labs and even Snapchat. And then yeah. you see, I'm sure you've got an extensive network of people. That you oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot like on uh, Instagram as well. <laughs> a lot of a lot of sailors around the world are very, you know, isolated and lonely. So they communicate uh, the best way they can and they post stuff on Instagram. And, and uh, Facebook. I mean, they're 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 nice people. They're doing their jobs. I, I can't I can't blame them uh, for for what they're doing. Uh, yes, uh, there are issues between governments, but at the end of the day, we're all people, right? So we we we're all one community. And I think the um, the coronavirus situation uh, helped bring us together, all of us. And I I, I see that as a positive. Yeah. Great. Well, again, thank you so much, Samir. It was really a pleasure to uh, have you on board and, and, and hear all this stuff for me. And uh, I'm sure we'll be in contact soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye. Bye.